Have you ever experienced radical love? Love, acceptance, even though you are broken. Love where you know you can trust the other or others who will not judge, will not control, won't tell you what to do or believe. That's a love that lets you be authentic and exactly who you are. Where you no longer have to adjust who you are, but you can truly be yourself. It's not that romantic love, but it can turn into romantic love. That can happen. It's not based on obsession. It's definitely not based on obsessive acts. It's love described by Paul. Love is patient, kind, not envious or arrogant or rude, doesn't insist on its own way, rejoices in the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, and very much endures all things. Jesus taught us that love in his actions. Did he walk up to the Roman soldiers who asked for healing from his slaves? Well, what do you believe? Who are you? He healed all who needed to be healed, forgave whatever needed to be forgiven, accepted, loved, and showed compassion to everyone he met. Well, in our gospel today, Jesus is slowly making his journey to the cross. Where we know he will die a horrible death. True to himself and true to God's will. Love can be difficult. And Jesus shows that radical love for every one of us as he suffered and died for us. And it's radical love. Jesus' love goes against social mores, goes against culture, goes against women have not being able to sit at the foot of Jesus, not being able to communicate with men, engage. Where there is a freedom, we find a freedom in that kind of love, a freedom to be a true friend not expecting, but hoping for compassion. Mary of Bethany knows exactly what radical love is, and she shows it. She took in Jesus' message. She went against the appropriateness of how to act as a woman. She went against economic consideration. It was Mary, who sat at Jesus' feet and listened to his words and took them to heart. She is aware. And I think as she looks at Jesus before he goes to Jerusalem, I think she's aware that he is burdened and he needs comfort and acceptance and compassion. And that is exactly what she gives him. She gave of herself. She took the costly perfume, poured it onto his feet, and dried his feet with her hair. Humility, true love, radical love. And she was chastised and ridiculed for that love. And I don't think she minded a bit. She did engage in love for her friend. And Jesus supported her. Jesus says, leave her alone. She's keeping it for the day of my burial. It was Mary who knew exactly what Jesus, is need Jesus needed at that moment. No arrogance. No boastfulness. No pride. Humility and love. And she is an inspiration for us to do what the Spirit calls us to do. Now for us, 
inspired by Mary, Bethany. Sometimes we're called in action, maybe to witness or bring to light some hard conversations with our friends, to bring concern, love, witness truth. It may not be received well, as we well know. But even when it's not received well, and I know if I've had that experience, oh my, yes. And I bet you may have too. Getting that hard conversation and because you love somebody and you're concerned. And maybe not accepted for it. Even then, a friend remains a friend and allows who they're speaking with, maybe who is disagreeing with them, allows them the freedom to make the choice and make a mistake, and maybe stands aside, even when our friend is angry with us, stands aside and just waits, and is still a friend. Because when people have their hearts transformed, we know we'll be needed. That's love. That's that radical love for one another and our friends. We are not called to accept abuse. We're not called to accept misbehavior for ourselves. But we let other people learn what they need to learn, knowing that we will journey with them when they need healing. There was a time when I was befriended and friended quite a group of eclectic people. We were all kind of engaging in searching. We were engaged in brokenness. And we all came together and supported one another. And what a diverse group we were. My Sudanese friend, raised in Islam. My Jewish friend. My Christian friend my Buddhist friend, all of us engaged in feeling like we didn't have a voice maybe, but we all came together and we engaged in that radical love. We all supported one another. I remember many a time, Hassan would knock at the door and have all his food and said, Celeste, I we're gonna cook. And we did. And I'm still friends with him. He considers my eldest daughter his, his first daughter. Why? Because at that time, I was a single, newly single parent. I was divorced, going back to graduate school. I had a three-year-old, four-year-old. And it was difficult. It was difficult. But they were there. They were there with me. And we were all there together. I also, my daughter and I, were at a coffee shop most of the time playing games, and our people would come and go, and we would know everybody there, and they would join us in games, take time to just be with us. And one of those people who I knew there, not very well, but saw him frequently, he was a man of the street. He lived in his van. I don't know all of his history, but what was spoken was that he was very successful years before. He was an accountant, he had a family, had everything he wished for, and he was on an incredible path. Well, as what happens and mistakes are made, he was a bit arrogant, I think. He thought he was unstoppable, and ended up addicted to drugs, mainly cocaine. He lost his family, he lost his friends, he lost his work, and he lost his mind. And many people in that coffee house were very afraid of him. He looked mean, I have to say, he looked mean. He, was a census taker periodically. He took his showers, this was in Tucson, he took his showers at the University of Arizona McHale building, the stadium. 
No one really wanted to communicate with him. They were scared. But he was articulate. He was articulate. And one day he came to my table and said, the police are arresting people who are sleeping in their cars on the street. Do you mind if I park my van in your driveway? At night, so I don't get picked up? And that's true, at that time, that is exactly what was happening. And I realized it must have been awfully hard for him to ask for a favor, because he never asked anyone for anything. By his demeanor, people assumed and made judgments. But I had never seen him angry or say a harsh word. So I said, without hesitation, yes, you can park your van in my driveway at night. And he did. I never knew when he came in and parked. It was very late. And by sunrise, he was gone. And later, he came to me and said, I can't tell you how much you meant to me. I'm going to watch out for you and your daughter. And I'm going to make sure nobody hurts you and nobody does anything to you, and you all will be OK. And that's when I realized he must have witnessed some great tragedies in his life. And maybe tragedies because of being associated with him. I appreciated him. And he taught me and affirmed the fact we should not judge one another. And that everybody has a big heart and inside sometimes. I left Tucson. And when I went to visit, I saw a man walking down the street, very, very thin. You could tell he was very ill, and a street person, and wild hair, looking very scary. And he walked up to me and said, you don't recognize me. I've been really sick, but if you close your eyes, you recognize my voice. And I did, and it was Jim. And he still was thanking me for that random act of kindness. Radical love, compassion, and kindness. And we were that to one another. That spark of divine love God places within each of us that if we look carefully, we can all find in everyone. So radical love. That's the love Jesus teaches all of us. And that's the love that Mary learned and was inspired by and acted upon and inspires us. You know, Martin Luther King Jr. said, it's never too late to do the right thing. And the right thing is always to show compassion and kindness, even to those maybe who criticize us, chastise us, reject us, and are mean and even those who just appear as so. It's never too late to do the right thing. It's never too late to be a friend, even a friend to a stranger. And I have found many strangers who, who have become friends, even in that just connected moment. We can do the right thing, bear the ridicule from those who don't understand. Jesus supported Mary in her demonstration of humility and love, just as Jesus supports us, and the Holy Spirit guides us in that love. And we are all part of God's loving creation. So love's the way of life. Love, in the end, brings peace. Not arrogance or obsession, it brings calm. It brings peace to our hearts and souls. And love surpasses all understanding. Maybe it's not radical love. Maybe it's really not radical love. It's just love.